All right, people, it is Saturday morning. The day is happening. It's like eight o'clock. I'm setting my alarm, waking up out of a dream. It was pretty cool. It's an action adventure dream. It was pretty cool. And I was going through like some kind of checkpoint. It was, there were other people involved. So there were like good guys and bad guys. And um, I had these, I had a security card that was supposed to say what time it was on it, but it didn't. So then I realized I had two security cards that, and I was going through a checkpoint and I had to show the right card and that's when I got awoken by my alarm to let me know that it was time to feed the, I used to say cats, but it's the squirrels, it's time to feed the squirrels. So I get up, I know Pippi's out there somewhere and come in here, open the door first so that if she gets here before I do, she can let herself in and get what she needs. Um, so I did that and then I got dressed and I came down and it was Pippi and little guy who was down the lane and my new update today that I learned. So I thought she didn't like him living with her, but what I think it is, she just doesn't like him getting in first. Cause you know how they race up the tree and then big time race up the tree and Pippi has to be the first one in. I think I figured that out. Their den faces upward. So I think what it is, is if she's first one in, then if it snows, if it rains, he's the one that catches the weather. But what I found today is, I think she does like living with him. First off, because we had another good, like we were all eating together, the three of us. She's perfectly fine with him being there. I'm out here with a um, little guy who lives down the lane, with Pippi and Pippi. And we just had a hawk fly overhead. So, um, you know, they both froze. I did the clap and yell. He went away. I can see now why they do this. They've got to love that they're standing here with someone big rather than scrounging around on the ground for nuts from last fall. You know, they've got a guard and they've got a steady stream of food and then they can get right back into their den. They are definitely losing weight. They're losing their winter bulk, which must be scary, I would think, if you were a squirrel. So they were out and they were not out very long when Pippi went running up the tree and I thought she was trying to beat him up there. But once she got in there, she started alerting and I'm like, why is she alerting? She was alerting to him, hurry up and come get in the tree. And I got some video of him like coming over. He came a different route up different trees and hopping over different trees to get in. And I'm like, why? So I thought maybe she saw a hawk because there was a hawk while they were on the deck with me. We had a hawk fly right over us. So they're out even at 7.15 in the morning, apparently. Um, so I don't know if the squirrels are gonna start waking up even earlier now. So I thought she had seen a hawk cause she's up there alerting. And I saw a little squirrel who lives down the lane start, you know, going tree to tree to tree, trying to get in there. And then he got in there. But what it was, and I also got like a second of video of this, but not very much, so I don't know if I'll be able to put it in. There were squirrels that were out. There were riffraff squirrels. So I think what there were two black squirrels and one gray squirrel that were riffraff out sniffing around. So I think what she was doing was telling them, come on, get back in here, because they needed to fill up the space so that no riffraff could move in. So what I'm guessing is, is that, that she used to guard her space big time. She wanted to be the only squirrel living in there. I think what she did was she finally gave in and said, okay, I need two people to defend this space. Otherwise a second can always creep in. So she probably picked a good guy because a little squirrel who lives down the lane is a good guy. He's a really sweet squirrel. So she probably picked a, a sweet squirrel said, okay, you, we're going to live together here and we're going to protect this place. So Riff Raff can't get in because she had the luxury of living there alone before there was so much riffraff coming through. This must be like kind of nomad season or something. Or if it's just the stakes are higher when it's really cold out and you don't want to be having to fight riffraff out of your tree, you know, because once they get in and you're out, it's so much harder to get back in. But she's smart what she did because now that she has a bunk mate, she has the luxury of coming out, coming to me, getting out, running around a little bit and then he can guard the fort and then she gets back up there and he can try to guard it, you know. So they, I think that's what they're doing now because she went up there and she alerted and when she saw Riff Raff, she ran in there first, then she alerted calling to him. He came, 
boom, now they're all set, they're guarding the fort. So unfortunately, breakfast was cut a little bit short for them, but the good news is they are safe because it's um, it's gonna be really windy today and it's cold, it's in the, I think it's like 20 degrees and nobody wants to be locked out of their house when it's 20 degrees, having to fight their way back in from a down position of being the one outside the fort <laughs> trying to get back in, not a good place to be. So. I think I've got that figured out what's going on. I had some video yesterday when Pippi and I were out doing breakfast. There was one really cool like Charlie's Angels scene. If anyone's seen that movie, there's like this thing they keep doing where the, the girls all like kind of sit back to back with guns. Um, yeah, that's totally what we were doing. Like we were looking, we didn't have guns. I wish we had guns. But <laughs> it would be so cool if I could arm the squirrels, but I don't think that could work. Um, we were sitting back to back on one of the squirrel hides. She was eating, I was giving her food and we were both looking out for bad guys. So I have some video of that. That was kind of a cool moment of girl and squirrel working together. Yesterday we had what almost was an absolute tragedy. I almost saw Tupac get taken by a hawk, which would have absolutely devastated me. It kind of devastated me anyway. I couldn't do a video last night. But I was inside, I was talking to someone on the phone and, um, and I saw a, I didn't even realize it was a hawk. I saw a bird, I realized it was a bird, but it was so paper thin. I saw it from the side, like it was coming down this way. And it, and it, wasn't, it wasn't the size or anything about it that alerted to me that it was a hawk. It, it almost was, it was all, it was kind of barely perceptible. It was like paper thin and it was just coming down. I can't even do it with my hand because yeah, it's like this. And just, and it was the, it was the trajectory that th that gave me the clue that something was wrong because if it was a normal bird a real bird a nice bird you know a blue jay a morning dove they don't just zero in like that it, it was all the way across through the woods coming down at a, at a slight angle <sighs> but clearly coming in for a landing in the way it was just it was the trajectory not the size that made me know it was a hawk or something bad, I should say. I don't think I even registered it was a hawk yet. <clears throat> so I walked outside on the deck to get a better look. And that's when I saw it was coming straight at Tupac. And uh, and I knew it was Tupac because she had just come to me for a nut and now she was over there in her area. And, um, and there were no other squirrels out. So I knew it was her. And either that or it was a riffraff that was in her area and she had disappeared, which didn't make sense. So my mind was like, all right, like, it has to be Tupac. And he was coming Although I have to say, it's a horrible thought, but part of me did think, oh God, please don't let that be too pig. Please let it be riffraff. And it's not like I want it to be any squirrel, but I just so didn't want it to be her. Um, so, and not that I want riffraff to die, believe me. I don't want any of them to die. I protect them all. I protect them all. But anyway, so he's coming down sideways at her. And I just, when I realized and I saw her and it was just coming so fast and I just started clapping and screaming and if I'm not mistaken, I think I yelled the F word. And, um, oh my God. And I, I got so lucky because it was like, just as he came in contact, I don't know if he had grabbed her already and I started clapping and screaming and he let go of her, or if he was right about to grab her and my clapping and screaming alerted her and she, uh, or at least gave her the, um, the chance that she needed, the, the millisecond of chance that she needed to, you know, if it diverted him in any way and she, got out of the ball, oh my God. And then when I got outside, and then he was sitting on the ground, he was enormous. The fact that this hawk was almost imperceptible in the air, now I understand how it happens. Cause I've wondered before, where did he come from? Where did he come from? I tell Rags, I'm like, these, like I'll be on the deck, that time I was on the deck and a hawk landed there. I'm like, where did he even come from? When they're flying, they're almost imperceptible. And I can see now how a squirrel would miss it. It doesn't look like a, you, you picture, as a squirrel, it's going to look like a gigantic pterodactyl. But somehow when they fly, they don't look like a giant pterodactyl. Not even to me. They, I, I, like I said. But anyway, so so then I go. I, I start, you know, running over there. And 
and he was standing on the ground like almost like he wasn't sure what to do and he was enormous he was enormous and i started clapping and screaming and tupac had jumped onto a tree um an evergreen so she was like kind of situated on a branch against the trunk there's some foliage um but i could see her and i know he could see her and <clears throat> i just started clapping and screaming at him and i it was bizarre though because when he tried to take off it was almost like he couldn't pull his own weight up like he was having trouble getting off the ground i don't understand why and then and then he kind of he almost like leaped over there was like a, a thing that he like leaped over but he got to the other side and then there was like green um trees there evergreens and i i don't know if he hid in them and then i couldn't find them i don't know what he did it was like he just disappeared they are so wily they're horrible they are they're, they're they're like the worst criminal okay so i will stop with that now what i couldn't believe further you would think you would think that tupac would get in her cabin and not come out for days but no she <laughs> she it was weird it was like she didn't want to go in her cabin and i don't know if it was that maybe she had so much adrenaline because she just dodged the death bullet but like she was like she, she went on her cabin and then she was like i'm trying to remember if at that point she was alerting she was like making this sound and then and then i went inside and i came out and then she was on the porch of her cabin alerting so i, I was looking around for a hawk didn't find a hawk she came down and went and got some water and came to me and wanted some food so i think she was alerting for me to come outside she was hungry i guess but she's never done that before so and i don't know if she just wanted to share the joy that like hey you know i'm here i lived and it's true we did i got some video um she came to the deck and i fed her and she was eating like crazy she normally eats pretty slow she was just devouring that nut i think she had a lot of wouldn't anybody like some major adrenaline for the fact that she just missed a heinous death and um anyone who doesn't have empathy for it is pretty easy just think about if it were your mother and a pterodactyl were coming down and getting her and then you had to think about the way she was going to die as you saw the pterodactyl flying away with your mother and its claws that's about that's about it so not hard to imagine or imagine if it's you, if you don't like your mother, <laughs> think about what if it were you and you had to worry about these flying pterodactyls that were constantly overhead and then people saying things like, well, a pterodactyl's got to eat. Like you're supposed to just deal with the fact that it could be you at any minute that is going to have to get grabbed in talons and torn apart by a giant friggin' pterodactyl beak just because somebody somewhere thinks a pterodactyl has to eat. So, um... Yeah, it's a sucky way to go, and humans don't have to think about it, really, unless they get eaten by a tiger or something. Even then, it's not quite the same, but I guess it's pretty close. Um, it's just not, it can't be a fun way to go, and I don't understand how anyone could not have empathy for that, but there are some people who don't have empathy at all, so that's who they are, and they'll never understand. Uh, two packs here to live another day. Pippi and little squirrel who lived down the lane had a brief breakfast, and here we go. We're heading into another Saturday. Two pack, you live, man. You live. Oh my God, I can't even talk right now. A hawk just almost got two pack. He came all the way down. I saw him, she had just gotten a nut for me and she came over here by her place and um, she was on the ground and the hawk came and he either grabbed her or was right about to grab her and I started crying and crying, clapping and screaming and um, he either dropped her I mean, it was, and then he was standing on the ground and then I clapped and made him get away. You know, I came over here obviously and then I don't know why she isn't going in her place. Are you okay? Tupac was just crying in her cabin and I couldn't figure out why. I think she wanted me to come out here and guard her so she could get some water. I can't even believe she's coming out after what happened. I really wish she wouldn't. I wish she'd go back in her cabin so I could go inside. Yeah.
hiding for days after what just happened to her.